I fully expect to continue what Sheriff King started in bonding the law enforcement agencies within Bighorn County and continuing to use that momentum to serve and protect the community. You just heard from Bighorn County Sheriff Jeremy Middlestead speaking ahead of a memorial service this morning for the late Sheriff Daryl King. Good Wednesday evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Ren Wadsworth. Friends, family members, and several law enforcement agencies gathered to honor the sheriff's life and legacy at Lockwood High School. Travia Forte was at the service and has the details. Today, family members and colleagues of Sheriff Daryl King gathered here to pay the respects for his passing. The procession arrived just a little before 9 a.m. The casket was escorted into the gym for a beautiful memorial service to honor the life of Daryl King. We heard from family members and friends who talked about King's military service in the Marines, as well as his career in law enforcement. Speakers today said Daryl was a prominent member of the community, and that was clear by the turnout this morning as police and sheriff's departments across the Treasure State came to honor King. Prior to the service, Bighorn County Sheriff's Office held a press conference where Sheriff Jermaine Middlestead not only expressed his remorse for a loss of a dear colleague and friend, he also addressed his plans for his new role as Sheriff of Bighorn County. I want the community to know that even though the Sheriff's Office is grieving and we are broken a little bit, we still stand fast to protect the community and do what needs to be done to ensure their safety and servitude. Sheriff Middlestead said Sheriff King entrusted him with the honor of being the undersheriff before his untimely death, and that he will do his best to step in and fill Sheriff King's shoes. Today's services represent the legacy and the life Sheriff Daryl King led during his lifetime. After the service, the casket was transported back to Hardin, where he was buried with the ceremony in the Fairview Cemetery. With Nonstop Local, I'm Travia Forte. A lot of local stories to get to this half hour. But first, you could see her there on your screen now. There's Chief Meteorologist Tracy Smith with your weather. Hey there, Tracy. Yes, hi, Ren. So far through most of your day, we've been looking at pretty quiet conditions. And as we move more into the overnight period, we're expected to see increasing cloud cover settling in and across the region. Partly to mostly cloudy skies can be expected out of Livingston and Cody. And you'll notice that those temperatures will be falling more into the 20s and teens, especially out of northern Wyoming, between 3 and 7 a.m. Out of Billings and Miles City, we are also looking at clear skies becoming mostly cloudy as we get closer to 3 a.m. Temperatures continue to hover right into the 20s, dropping into the upper teens by 7 a.m. in the eastern plains. And that's also where we're expected to see a little bit of fog developing tomorrow morning. And of course, we've got much more coming up in your full weather forecast. Alrighty, thank you for that, Tracy. Now, the period for the public to make their voices heard to the State Department of Environmental Quality about a proposed auto shred repository in Shepherd ends tomorrow. The proposal includes over 300 acres of property on the corner of U.S. Highway 87 and Shepherd Acton Road to be used to store auto shredder residue from the Pacific Steel and Recycling Facility in Lockwood. DEQ issued a draft environmental assessment on the proposal back in mid-October, finding minimal impacts to people living in the area as well as native wildlife. Still, the proposed development has been controversial with residents around the area. If you'd like to provide input on the proposal, have any concerns, or just want to learn more about it, you can visit deq.mt.gov public to get involved. And again, that period to submit your comments on the proposed landfill ends tomorrow at midnight. Now, Carbon County Disaster and Emergency Services hosted a meeting in Fromberg earlier today to discuss cleanup still underway from the historic flooding of 2022. Connor McAvoy attended the meeting to find out more. Local, state, and federal agency representatives came here to Fromberg School for a public informational meeting discussing the cleanup of the flooding from last year. Agencies including Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks and the Department of Environmental Quality held a panel for those who attended the meeting. They discussed the process of the cleanup left over from the 2022 flooding still continuing in Fromberg. The representatives also addressed riverfront cleanup 
and how those who have properties near the Yellowstone River and were affected by the flood are still dealing with the aftermath to this day. Serena Allen is the Carbon County Emergency Manager, and she says while the cleanup in Fromberg is far from over, she hopes members of the community are comfortable airing their concerns about where they live and what problems they still face from the flooding. There's still things happening. Um, it just it looks a lot like it's behind the scenes, and so I want um, everybody to understand that we're still working the flood. We're still here to help. Um, and that, that, that we're not done. It's going to take some time. And to please, if ever you have questions, reach out to, you know, me, you know, in Red Lodge at the Carbon County um, Disaster and Emergency Services Office. You could talk with Conservation or Army Corps. All those are great to reach out to. And, uh, yeah, don't be afraid. We're still here to help. Allen emphasized the importance of every agency who attended the meeting and hopes more Carbon County residents share any frustrations they are dealing with after a year and a half. I'm Connor McAvoy. Nonstop local. Alrighty, thank you for that, Connor. Today, the Department of Agriculture announced an investment of nearly $2 million for nine Montana small businesses and agricultural pr producers. The hope is to expand markets and create more economic opportunities for rural producers around the state. Three of the producers selected are scattered across a few cities in south central and eastern Montana. Powder River Premium Beef in Ashland and Oswald Farms in Joliet, Montana are both receiving $250,000 to be put forward towards their processing, storage, marketing and transportation facilities. And in Sydney, Montana, Crooked Creek Farms is also receiving more than $35,000 to put toward their marketing supplies and transportation of butter and cream made from locally raised dairy cows. The investments are made possible through the USDA's Value Added Producer Grant Program, which helps generate new products, create and expand marketing opportunities, and increase producer income. Montana was one of 37 states to receive funding through the USDA, which has invested $196 million in more than 180 projects in rural areas across the nation. And gas prices are defying odds and still dropping. And it's welcome news for consumers as we head into the winter holidays. But there are growing concerns that a key OPEC meeting this week to ongoing wars could disrupt that trend. Mike Valerio looks at all that, plus how long experts say the low prices at the pump will stick around. A gift at the gas pump just in time for the holidays. Gas prices are still dropping and leaving more jingle in consumers' pockets. It's the longest decline that we've seen since the summer of 2022. Despite a series of threats that suggested the opposite could happen, gas prices have now fallen every day since their peak on September 18th. According to AAA, that's a streak of more than 61 consecutive days. That significant drop comes despite Russia's ongoing war on Ukraine and the Israel-Hamas conflict. That's the good news for the next few months. The bad news is that if Middle East tensions remain high into the first quarter of 2024, then you'll see gasoline prices move up independently of crude. According to AAA, the average price for a gallon of regular gas stood at 325 on Wednesday. That's down 25 cents from a month ago. Right now, 15 states are averaging $3 or less for a gallon of gas, according to AAA. And there are now more than 20,000 gas stations selling gas at 275 a gallon or less. That's according to Gas Buddy, which says you can expect those low prices for the next several months. I do expect that between now and, say, Valentine's Day of next year, gas prices should be in the low $3 range nationally, with many states falling below that $3 a gallon mark. Meanwhile, OPEC and its allies have a critical meeting scheduled this week, and experts say the outcome of that gathering could impact prices at your local gas station. That OPEC meeting could hold the key to future gas prices. For Consumer Watch, I'm Mike Valerio. The United Way of Yellowstone County hosted their Stuff the Sleigh event earlier today to help the most vulnerable in our community as temperatures start to dip. United Way, with help from Red Truck Real Estate, spent the day collecting new or gently used winter apparel, sleeping bags, tarps, and yoga mats to fill up the sleigh, or as you can see there, the truck tonight. 
The donations will later be distributed to unhoused members of the community to help them stay warm this winter. And United Way Director of Community Relations Stephanie Brazil says that right now the need is in the Magic City is great. Yellowstone County has a pretty huge number of unhoused individuals and families and we are focusing on supporting those individuals and families <laughs> when it comes to this season and keeping them warm. And also featured live music, food and beverages and a tree lighting ceremony. But United Way says if you're unable to help stuff the sleigh tonight, they will always take donations to help keep our unhoused neighbors warm all year round. Some exciting news to share as well as the 38th annual Festival of Trees is starting tomorrow and continuing through the weekend. The event is an annual benefit for the Family Tree Nurturing Center and is being held at the Metro Park Pavilion starting with the gala and tree auction tomorrow, November 30th at 5 p.m. and then continuing through Friday and Saturday for most of the days. Scheduling details and tickets are available for purchase right now, either through the Family Tree Nurturing Center website or by calling 406-252-9799. Now stick around everyone. On the other side of the break, Chief Meteorologist Tracy Smith has your extended forecast. And tonight in sports, we head to Glendive to learn how hometown guys and international players blend together to make for a pretty cool team culture at Dawson Community College. Stick around.